Hey guys and welcome back to a new video and in this video I'm going to talk about the top 10 units of 2021. But before I'm going to talk about the best units, we have to do some rules of course because you just can't compare a support unit with a DPS that doesn't work. That's why I'm going to split this video into two parts. At first I'm going to talk about the best 5 DPS units and then I'm, go I'm going to talk about the best five support units the support units and dps units uh, have different use have a different usage like raids pvp arena and pve but there's there are units featured for every type of content so don't worry about that oh and another thing that i have to mention is that uh, those units the, the number of those units they don't follow a particular order like for example asuka is number one doesn't mean that she's the best pve unit but anyway, that said, without any further ado, let's take a look to the first unit. Okay, let's start with the support units first. Uh, number 5 on my list is now Fumi. Now, Fumi is already one year old, or almost one year old, and he's a Carlab unit. But the cool thing is that he, that he was unique at, at his release, because not only is he the most tanky physical unit in this game, he's also able to deal out some decent damage, but the mo the most important thing that I have to mention is that he that he was the first unit that was able to make himself a self fourth target. And the self fourth target that just basically means that all enemy units that are in range of him will go for him and not for your other allies. But not only that, he also has some other good uh, supporting skills like nullify all citizens for three turns on his merchant basics. And he's also able to recover on jewels. He's he's able to place uh, grids to reduce damage and so much other stuff. So in my opinion, he definitely deserved the number five on my list. And now for number four. Number four on my list is Natalie. And Natalie is probably the most non-support unit in this game because you can use her in every type of content except for raids maybe. But yeah, she's one of the best support units for PVE, arena, and pvp and the reason is simple she has a skill called vaccine and vaccine nullifies and prevents statuses on herself and ally units around her and then she's also able to recover a good amount of hp she has a decent tankiness and she also has a skill to buff either p attack p death and agility or magic attack magic death and agility if i remember correctly and she also has a skill that recovers jewels and raises element resistance. But yeah, the main reason why she's on that list is because of Rexine. I mean, there are also other support units that have Rexine, like El 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 Elizabeth, but she's definitely not as good as Natalie, especially because she doesn't have a job plus in global yet. Then, number three on my list is Nisha. Nisha is a global exclusive unit. Uh, one of the newer ones, but she's all already like seven months old or something like that. But yeah, Nisha is definitely the best support unit, or let's say the best debuffer, because she there, there's no other unit that's, that is as good as her. Because she has at first she has a necro mansa trap, which makes her able to reduce fire, water, wind, and thunder resistance. Then she also has a Memento Vision ability, which makes her able to lower the slash rest of the target by 60. Then she also has a reaction that makes her able to lower the slash rest of the target by 25. And she also has a second Memento or the VCR on her second Memento makes her able to reduce the fire rest and thunder rest by 45. Then she also has some other crazy stuff like all the down minus 20. She's also super fast, she has a good movement, then she also has a skill that nullifies buffs and also nullifies support. Um, nullify support basically means that the enemy is only able to use skills that inflict damage. And having all of those things in, uh, in raid on a single unit, is in, it's, it's just incredible. She's, she's like 2 or 3 times better than Chihaya. And for example, Chihaya is only able to reduce the slash rest by 60, but the other good thing uh, about Chihaya is that at least she's able to uh, lower the agility by 20% as well. And 
the only thing is that Nisha doesn't have the agility debuff, but all other things on her are so much better compared to Chihaya. And that's why she is number 3 on my list. Ba -da 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 -da. I currently started to upload Pokemon content, so if you're interested in Pokemon content, make sure to take a look into the description. There's a playlist of my Pokemon Brian Diamond walkthrough. And now, back to the video. And now to number 2. Number 2 on my list is Art. And I think she well deserved that place because uh, Acht is super tanky. She has, uh, even though she doesn't really have incredibly high P def, I mean 1300 or something like that, 1200 like uh, average or something like that, but she's still able to take to tank a lot, and that's because of her buff. She has uh, multiple snowballs that raise her. Uh, P death, magic death, and so on. She has uh, passives that raise her magic death, all elemental rest, and so on. She has multiple uh, snowballs, just like I said. Uh, but not only that, she also has some other buffs on her skills, like P tech and dex buffs. Then she's also able to make herself a self force target. She's able to uh, raise her P death and magic death. She's able to raise her own movement, agility, and jump. She has, she just has so many good buffs on her. She also has so many good mementos, VCR, skiers, and so on. Acht has so many different play styles. She also has a transformation. She has so many buffs on skills, snowballs on VCRs, passives that that make her even tankier. And she also has a super high healing rate. She's able to debuff the enemy. She's like, like I, 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 I just don't have words for that, man. You can play her however you want, and she always fits in your wind team. And then number one on my list is definitely Nyx. And Nyx is not only able to deal uh, decent damage, he's also able to debuff a lot. Because uh, with his fifth gate, he's able to lower the magic rest by 100. Then he also has an Arcana Ready reaction, which lowers the element rest of the target. He's also able to nullify CT up, CT down, delay, stop, and so on. He he he's also able to quicken your unit. He's he's able to delay the enemies. He's able to give you CT. He's able to give you CT up. He's like ten times better than Rahu. But but he has he just has so much good usage. Like for PVE, he's great. He's a super good support unit for uh, PvP if you play on manual. For whatever reason you should play on manual. He's also one of the best debuffer for raids or let's say support units for raids. He's just he's just too good. He almost he fits in like every team. But yeah, the magic grass minus 100 is definitely the most important thing about him. Okay, but now I'd say let's take a look to the top 5 DPS units of this year. Number 5 on my list is Kaya, and I think that does need much explanation because her Chub Plus kit is extremely OP. Um, she's able to interrupt the opponent's jump, she's able to buff herself multiple times, she's able to debuff the enemy, she's able to lower the CT, she's able to lower fire rest, match quest, just like I said, she's able to debuff a lot, she's able to buff a lot. Both of her mementos give her super high damage modifiers, and her segmento also has a snowball which raises missile attack power, magic attack power, counter attack power, and healing. And she also has so many gears that you could play on her, but the most important thing about her is definitely uh, the Ashemic Crush. Yeah, she's able to inflict the Ashemic Crush to the enemy, and Ashemic Crush basically means that the skill that is able to inflict the Ashemic Crush, well, Ashemic Crush basically makes 20% of the damage that you inflicted with the skill that can inflict Ashemic Crush. Which makes her super good in raids, in case you're using her with support units and with stops, but she's she's so good for raids. Uh, for arena, she's just okay, for PvP, for PvP she's just okay, but she's also super good for uh, PvE content. Especially her skill called Blazing Mechanical Dragon the Four Rulers has such a high area. The area is so, it's, it's just so big. She, she's just too good overall, and she definitely deserved number 5 on my list. And now to number 4. Number 4 on my list, I was actually uh, struggling because I want, I had to decide if I should go for Reftalia, but then I decided to 
to go with Yawas because Yawas is, in my opinion, Yawas is a bit better than Riftalia. Not that much better, but still a bit better than Riftalia. I mean, both are uh, slash slash units with a uh, super high erasion rate, but the thing is, Yawas is also able. I mean, Yawas has so much, has so many more buffs compared to Riftalia. She has an all attack buff that raises her all attack by 150. And that buff also raises the erasion rate for all attack types except for magic attack. Then she also has a reaction that raises uh, uh, erasion rate for all attack types except for magic attacks. And the deuce buffs, the deuce buffs are something that Riftalia doesn't have. Then she also has a buff that uh, lowers true spend rate and raises slash, uh, slash attack. Then she also has a buff that is stacked up to three times and that buff raises P attack and crit rate. And then she has so much more. She also has a CT down skill, which gives her a super good matchup. Like for example, just watch my rank up quests. I made like three rank up quests only with her and Chronomancers. She's an absolute monster. She's super fast, good damage, uh, high erasion rate. And if she falls below 25%, then she gets 20% uh, more agility and erasion rate plus 30. And that's exactly why I like her a bit more than with Talia. Even though she just has single target attacks and Riftalia has at least a few um, AoE attacks. But the reason why Yaros uh, has the spot is because she's also a Holy Guard unit. And the Holy Guard units with their chop plus plus, they are ab absolutely broken. And especially if you run her in a team with, uh, with Kaya or Kudanstein, she's almost unstoppable. And talking about Holy Guard units, number 3 on my list is Quillenstein. And not only is, is Quillenstein able to deal incredibly high damage, he he also has a P attack stat of 1700, and he also has a super high crit rate and super high crit damage. So yeah, basically high super high damage in general. He also has a, he also has a gear which enhances P attack buffs on self, which means that if you are using Susan No on him, which quadruples his P attack, it raises his P attack by 600% for one turn. And with Susano and his other VCR skiers and so on that he that you are usually using on him, he's able to deal at least 70k with crits. And that's that's just incredible. He also has a gear that which gives him auto tool charge of 15 and it also reduces his HP cast rate by 100. It's the VCR. And that gear is the VCR from his second memento. And yeah, HP cost rate minus 100 and sure to charge of 15 if HP is uh, below 50%. But that's still not everything because the main reason why Kunenstein became that good is not only his incredibly high damage, it's also because of Shura State. And Shura State is, um, is, is one of, of his basic skills on his main job, which gives him guts twice and uh, while he's in Shura state, uh, he, he gets uh, he gets toko damage rate on two of his skills, and he also gets stop and delay res of 100 while he's, while he's in Shura state, which makes him able to to have a decent uh, usage in PvP, but mainly you use him in PVE content. He's also good in arena, and in arena of course. Uh, you might expect him to be not that good because uh, he's not super tanky. Yeah, that's true. But even though he's not tanky and he won't, he's not going to use his gut skill. Um, most you most uh, players don't have runes or gears equipped uh, for piercers, which means that Kudanstein is uh, almost every time able to one shot the enemy. The number two on my list is Zaha, and I think Zaha doesn't need much explanation. I mean, <laughs> right now he's the strongest and by far the strongest unit damage-wise in this game, and that's because that's not only because of his incredibly high P tech stat of 2,700. It's also because of two of his skills, which have a super high damage modifier. Then he also has second memento, which gives him skill use count plus one, which means you can. Uh, use uh, Truma nukes in raids, and if you are playing him correctly in raids, with along with Star Sweat, then he's able to deal at least three or four million with his nuke, and that's that's just incredible.
but that's not everything because he also has a VCR with, uh, with a vision ability that raises his speed attack by 30% and reduces HP cast rate by 100 when HP is below 50% and his main gear also gives him a jewel auto charge which means you don't have to make that many uh, normal hits to get jewels like uh, at the beginning of this game Zaha was by far the worst and by far the worst Dark Cavalier unit because he, he with, with each normal hit he was only able to get like 5 or 10 jewels uh, no I, I think I'm pretty sure it was like 5 jewels the that's, that's just hilarious and yeah I know even though Zaha has zero usage for PvP or Arena he still has a decent usage for um, PvE and the best usage for him is raids but okay, I already talked more than enough about Zaha. Now let's take a look to the actual best DPS unit in this game. And of course, number one on my list is Ragnarok. And I don't think that needs much explanation either. Because Ragnarok is able to hit 2000 P attack. She has 99 charm. She has skills that raise her CT by 100 after defeating an enemy. She has multi hits, and her 9 hit multi hit skill is a 100% hit skill, which gives Eurasian teams a super hard time. Then she also has Snowball, which raises slash tech, which raises slash tech power by 15 and all elemental rest by 4 after defeating an enemy. And that one is also stacked up to 5 times. She, uh, The more enemies she's, she's going to kill, the tankier she gets and the stronger she gets. Then she also has a doubled amount of HP for the first 5 turns after appearing on map. And she also she's also able to recover 60 jewels after appearing on map. And she's also able to raise crit rate by 50 and all status rest by 60 for 3 turns after appearing on map. And she's also able to crit with all of her skills. I mean that that's that there are so many things that she has and it's and it's basically just super hard to counter her like even if you are using a Yaras she has a, a multi hit 9 hit skill which has 100% hit rate which which means that even Reptelia and Yaras are, are, are not even able to stop her that easily As, and especially because 20k, 20k HP 20k HP Doubled amount HP amount for five turns of appearing on map or status stress. She makes units like Edgar or Magnus completely useless. She makes Eurasian teams completely useless. The only way to counter her is by using your own Ragnarok. But okay, guys, I think that video is already long enough. And also, feel free to write your own uh, top 10 units of this year in the comments. I'm really interested to see how your top 10 list looks like. But anyway, even though the video is nothing different compared to my other videos, I, st I hope you still had fun with it. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.